three, two, one. What's going on, everyone? You're watching Ash on Comics, and uh, I'm back after a bit of a hiatus with a comic review. This time, Ultraman, Rise of Ultraman. Really kind of stupid name, by the way. Ultraman, The Rise of Ultraman. I just call it The Rise of Ultraman. Seems a little redundant. Here is the uh, synopsis summary, if you will. Um, kind of fail by Marvel. Cover art by, doesn't show, but it should be quite obvious. This is none other than Alex Ross. A uh, little mixed. I guess Alex Ross does a pretty good, I mean, he, he does good everything, right? So, um, this book was donated to me uh, by Sergeant Bats. You may know him. Um, we've had a history of some collaborations. He does on and off YouTube stuff. He was gracious enough to give me a digital copy of this book to check out. And um, if it wasn't for him, I probably wouldn't be reading Daredevil from Marvel, which is the best Marvel book that Marvel makes. Um, so spoiler alert, this book is made by Marvel. It's not the best book <laughs> that Marvel makes. Um, but it was reasonably enjoyable. Um, here you can see uh, the art, what it looks like. Uh, it starts off in 1966, and um, we've got Agent Moroboshi. Um, investigating something in his rocket ship thing um, and he gets he crashes into some sort of UFO thing and we get a vision looks like Ultraman and then fast forward to present day 2020 now disclaimer here in the beginning I am not an Ultraman person I may have seen an episode of Ultraman in the past I, I don't actually remember uh, I probably, I mean, I probably have knowing me, but I don't know the story of his character at all. I know it's a uh, Japanese show about a character who can grow super big and fight kaiju monsters like Godzilla. That's about all I know. <laughs> and uh, there was a lot of shows in Japan that are like this. Ultraman is just one of the ones that is uh, risen to the top, much like Godzilla. There's lots of different kaiju stuff, but Godzilla is the king. So, my feedback, my review of this book, my impressions, obviously are based on no formal expertise of the uh, intellectual property. This may be completely accurate, it may be completely off the wall, I don't know. I'm just going to judge it as a newbie, some normal normie person coming into the book. What are you going to get? Now, like I said, it's mostly enjoyable. Um, honestly, i got to give this a positive review. Um, it's, it's, it's written by Kyle Higgins and it does have sort of a modern comics, uh, slant and we get this character Kiki. She's a cadet and she wants to excel. She does seem to fit the common, uh, Japanese, uh, trope that's in their, their, much of their fiction, anime, manga, TV shows, whatever. Um, she's sort of the, the sidekick character, but she's super smart and super, you know, uh, capable and she has to answer to kind of a gruff captain, uh, who, you know, obviously she's there to help all the time. Now that's an interesting trope that, well, it's, it's a forgivable trope to me. I, I don't, I don't necessarily mind tropes. I think actually that's a good thing because it gives readers what they want. If that's something that you're into, you know, like if you're if you're into a certain genre, certain certain types of stories, and, and it's because of those tropes, you want to see them. Like that's kind of what you paid for, right? Um, and uh, so that's that's fine. Uh, for me, I was like, oh, well, here neither here nor there. So they they go on this thing, and she gets brought on to do this field operation. She's never really had field experience yet. This is her first time, of course. Kaiju uh, shows up. And um, her, the captain character is a little bit too eager, too, too overconfident. They have these weapons called K-rays, which no one really understands how they work. 
we get these little um, little exposition parts that they they do the redacted things. So the the K Ray is a USP lightning gun, preferred sidearm of the USP, which is uh, if I remember, it's like the United Science science something i forget what the p stands for it's the book explains i just don't remember um this is provided to all usp agents for the purpose of self-defense developed by redacted and redacted the skin of a redacted kaiju um oh sorry i'm sorry that's not the k-ray this is the lightning gun so i was able to um decipher that the weapons that these agents use are harvested basically they they sort of how do you reverse engineer these kaiju powers and turn them into weapons? Which is I don't I don't know how that exactly works, but it's comic books. Who cares? Kind of it's kind of cool. Then we get this character who shows up out of the blue, <laughs> and um, it was it's a really weird transition. They're fighting. It's like oh what the, and then hey Kiki, and we got Captain Cool here in his little bomber jacket, and he's got a carry. That's what that weapon is, and then. Uh, She's like, Shin, what? You can't be here. Hey, whoa, I just saved you. Well, that's not your job, and I... Enough! Damn it, Hayata. How are you even aware of this event? And he says, I mean, I built a kaiju energy tracker. That's how you people found me and Kiki, remember? Oh, I remember. And I also remember confiscating that device personally. I may have built another one. Which, yeah, it's it, confiscating... You, if some guy makes something... And you confiscate it. He he's the guy who built it. It's like what's gonna stop him from making another one? Anyways, the captain doesn't like him. Turns out he's got this friend zone relationship with Kiki. You kind of can tell he's somewhat interested in her, but also satisfied. She's his best friend. I don't really like these kind of relationships. If if a guy has a woman, and that woman is his literal best friend, has got. No other guys that are better friends. You're interested in that woman. Especially if she's halfway attractive, which obviously it's comic books. Kiki, of course, is attractive. Um, we get this thing, this long sitting over dinner talking. It's like four pages worth. And it's kind of boring. But it does give some of the background about why he failed to get into the organization. She succeeded in jealousy. And then it, this is the part that annoyed me about the book. And it was going along pretty good, but it just came across like she's the smart, capable one. He's the this failure, you know. Um, and it just, that's so common in the modern. The girls are always the best at everything. They can always succeed. Um, and the guys, they just stumble along. And then how would they even, how would they even tie their shoes if they didn't have a woman in their life? Who knows? Um, so this, something falls to the planet, some weapon shows up, shoots it down, and, um, she gets an alert, they have to go investigate, so she brings him along, even though he's, like, not supposed to be this top secret organization, this, I suspend my disbelief for the sake of comic books, and, um, Ultraman shows up, um, which I believe is actually just, they could consider it Ultra before he merges, so, um, the captain guy is like, orders him to shoot the thing. He's like, well, I don't want to shoot it. I don't think that's right. And he's like, if you want in, this is your test. Like, you failed the last test. This is your test now. So he finally is like, whatever, I'll shoot him. And then he realizes what he did is wrong. He can see pain in the eyes. And we get this scene where he's like, I can, I can, it's thoughts. I can feel, it feels forgiveness. We shouldn't have, I didn't. Oh God, I'm so sorry. What can I do? And he reaches out. Shin, what are you doing? It's okay, Kiki. It's oh, and they touch, and he gets absorbed in, and then that's the end of the the issue. And I was like, okay, this wasn't terrible. It was fine, but I didn't feel. First of all, I'm guessing this character here. I for, I'm already forgetting his name. <laughs> Shin um, is going to be Ultraman, right? So he's the actual hero of the book, but. These two characters, uh, Kiki and her captain, felt more like the story was about them. And this Shin guy just kind of shows up and like, what's up, guys? And that's not the really right way to do an origin. At least so far. Maybe these other issues will change after this. 
but I didn't care about Shin at all. He's just sort of some hot shot that shows up like in this weird transition, like not even just boom. Hey, he's like, hey, what's up? I'm going to dinner with. Like, <laughs> um, it just if it, it, it was weird. It was a weird introduction, and I didn't get any sort of characterization with him at all that made me have any sort of empathy for him, have any sort of you know um, feeling for the character. Um, so then I noticed afterwards that there was some backup stories. You get this kaiju steps, which is Gurihiru, um, totally being uh, wasted, I guess. And th I saw this and I groaned. I was like, oh, Jesus. Um, and then it's like Ultra Q. And at first I wasn't even going to read these. I was like, I'm just going to review this comic based on the story. I don't care about these little backstories. But I read them and I'm glad I did. <laughs> Honestly, these backstories were better than the main uh, par portion of the book. Um, first of all, the kaiju steps, they're, they're trying to be kind of cute and funny, almost like if you can remember back in the days, like you got to be old like me, but back in the days of the old uh, Saturday morning cartoons, they would do these little PSAs. Um, it's kind of a, uh, a parody of those where they would have something happen, some kids doing things, and then they, you know, they learn a little more of the story. And then they were, whatever, they're cute, they're for kids. This does a similar thing, but they're not real PSAs. They're based on the, like, kaijus are real. And so they, like, warning you, like, remember, kids, if a kaiju's doing this, that... And they're cute, and they kind of add a nice a bit of levity to a story that I'm glad is not put in the main story. Like, I think this would, if they tried to do this sort of cutesy humor in the main book, it would ruin the tone. But here you can have it and have a little one page, a little ha-ha, cutesy. And if you don't like it, it's not really subtracting anything. If you're like, ah, this doesn't interest me, just skip it. This Ultra Q story, I looked at the art and I was like, oh, this is just going to be page filler. And it, it kind of is. Um, but when I got through the story, um, first of all, this is another case where you know, you've got uh, two agents, it's 1954, and the woman is super capable, and the guy is just kind of like, oh, and he's like, are you sure? We could, this is, I'm not sure we should be doing this, and of course, she's like, nope, we got to do it. She's the brave one, and it's just like, look, I'm, I'm not against having a woman be brave or anything like that, but when it's every single time now that the man is cowardly and afraid and unsure of himself, and the woman's like, take charge, and Oh, I'm going to show you. And of course, she's got a sword and she's fighting a kaiju hand to hand. I'm just like, <sighs> boring. It gets just like, <sighs> I just roll my eyes. Now, that being said, that's not even really the point of this story. You keep, it gets going on and it's these other characters that you can see up here. Um, there, there's a French guy and a German lady on the right. And I don't know what the guy on the left, but they're basically meant to be like, international things and, and they're monster hunters that they come to find out as they introduce later and this is where you get to see essentially the beginnings of how usp comes together you can see like oh because they start talking about we should join forces and form an agency because both of these groups know about monsters but there's no official organization yet and it's still kind of secret to the world and um but even more interesting is, so they all decide to go off to dinner and talk about it, but one of them stays behind, the German lady. Of course, the German German people are evil. Of course, of course, of course. <laughs> um, and uh, turns out, on the very last page, spoiler alert, spoilers. Sorry, if you're, this whole thing is spoilers. Um, it, it's, she's talking to an alien. Some, you don't get to really see and she's like, oh, you know, our plan's going, they don't understand. And one of the guys that was on her team decides, you know what, I don't want to leave her doing all the work by herself. I'm going to go back and help her. And, of course, she stumbles in on the conversation. And the alien says, you know, like, oh, eliminate him. Of course. And you see her eyes are all messed up. And um, she homelanders him right through the chest. Um, and if you don't get that reference, you need to watch the boys. Um Humans can never be allowed to know the truth of their world. And that's the end of this story. And honestly, this whole last page sums up what was probably an overly long story for that little backup story. It didn't need to be quite as long, but whatever. Um, and the art here is whatever it is. It's, it's But I this intrigued me. This made me care. I'm like, ooh, I get a little backstory of how USP got together. 
I got now an idea that, oh, there's aliens walking around looking like humans on the planet with their own secret agenda, and how do you know who to trust? And immediately this created intrigue that made me wonder, why didn't the main story do this? The main story was just really straightforward, just characters being like, look at me, I'm cool. You know, your typical, you know, the Kiki character, she's, she, she wants to be a hero for glory reasons. Like, she, there's a scene in the in the story where she's like, you know, something about, she's chastising Shin about, you didn't, you know, I get to be the hero or something or something. And you're like, that's not what a, being a hero is. It's not. It's not like, look at you get to be a star and all the, the spotlight gets to be on you. You do it because people need help. People aren't always able to take care of themselves. Sometimes you're in a situation to do something and you risk things to help other people who can't help themselves in the moment. That That's that's what heroism is. And when you, the, the moment you do it for glory, you're not being a hero. You're just being a glory hound. Um, anyways, no lecture on that. But that, I just found that interesting. I've, it made me care. Um, and then we get uh, things to come. We've got a two-page spread. Um, there you go. And Rise of the Ultraman. I give this... Oh, look, there's another kaiju steps. And they're, they're cute, whatever. Uh, you get the next issue. This was a well-done comic in the sense that it paints by numbers and it doesn't go out of the lines. I think if you're an Ultraman fan, which I'm not, like I'm just a normie guy, you're probably going to enjoy this, I think. Um, it's got a great cover art, so it looks great in your collection. The story's decent. I kind of want to know where it goes from here, especially because of that backup story. I'm just critiquing the backup story. Is not, that's not the purpose of the backup story. <laughs> you should, anyways. Um, but I'm going to give this three stars. Uh, you guys tell me what you thought of it. Tell me if you something you're interested in picking up now that uh, after this review. I don't know. Um, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you again next time.